and welcome to my podcast, brought to you by me, Vegan Danielle. Tune in as we discuss vegan-related topics ranging from cooking to fitness and nonprofits to small businesses. So sit back, grab a glass of almond milk, and listen up, because here comes another episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another podcast. I am your host, Vegan Danielle, and on the phone with me today is doctor and immune autoimmune specialist, Dr. Benjamin Benulis. Dr. Ben is a pioneering plant-based doctor. Right, can I stop you? Sorry, yeah. can we, I, like, I can't, you can't say specialist. Okay. Um, it's like... <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another podcast. I am your host, Vegan Danielle, and on the phone with me today is Dr. Benjamin Benulis, who focuses on helping people with autoimmune conditions. Dr. Ben is a pioneering plant-based doctor who helps people achieve profound levels of health and wellness through a plant-based diet. He has a deep appreciation for the lifestyle in reversing disease and building human health. Today, we're going to hear all about Dr. Ben's plant-based journey and how he uses his personal experience to help others. Welcome, Dr. Ben. Thanks for having me, Danielle. Really good to be here. Yeah, excited. Yes, I am so excited to speak with you as well. Um, Before we start talking about your career as a doctor, I would love to hear more about your personal journey. I'm assuming, like most of us, you probably weren't brought up vegan or plant-based, right? (laughs) No, not at all. I mean, I definitely was brought up in a household where my mom like valued health and it was like, okay, well, if this cereal has, you know, more than seven grams of sugar per serving, like I'm not going to get it for you. Um, But definitely not vegan or vegetarian or plant-based or anything like that. So. So then how did you make the switch? What led up to it? When did it happen? What was it that ultimately convinced you that this was an ideal diet for you? Um, well, it was I, about 10 years ago, I started having health problems. And, um, and so we can tell that story. But, um, you know, changing my diet was sort of like the last thing that I wanted to do. I did every other possible thing I could find or think of to try to get well. And I, I was very resistant to changing my diet. But, you know, when people say it's the last thing I'll do, well, eventually you get to the last thing and you're like, oh, here we go. <laughs> um, so, uh, I got really sick in 2010. Um, it started off slowly and it was nothing I could really put my finger on in the beginning. I just um, noticed that uh, I was, you know, losing energy towards the end of the work day. And I was, um, the food I ate wasn't always digesting the best. I was noticing that I would have like itchy patches on my hands from time to time. And it, it wasn't anything that I thought much of. But over the course of about six months, it kind of snowballed into um, every meal I ate was like World War III. I had eczema all over my hands where I didn't want to shake anybody's hand or anybody to see my hands. I kept them in my pockets a lot. I had really bad chronic fatigue where I was like drinking like two to three energy drinks a day just to get through work and then sleeping on the weekend. And um, I started to develop really bad unexplained chronic pain too, where just my body always felt like sore, like I'd not like hit by a truck, but like I was always, my muscles were always sore and um, it didn't really match with anything on WebMD. I just thought, Oh, I'm getting old, you know, old at, you know, 28, 29. And uh, (laughs) it was really, I was just, you know, living a crappy lifestyle that was, that was slowly doing me in or or rather quickly doing me in. Um, And so initially just started, um, you know, it was like, okay, eventually it got bad enough. I was like, I will go to the doctor. Like I didn't want to do it. Right. And that, you know, no uh, red blooded, you know, 20 something male wants to do that unless things get really bad. And so it got to the point where I was like, okay, well, it's, you know, and I just sort of had this expectation that I go to them and say, okay, I have symptoms A, B, and C, and they diagnose me with something and go, okay, now take drugs X, Y, and Z, and then you're cured. And then you move on and then, you know, life's good. Um, right. Turns out it doesn't work that way doesn't work that way. <laughs> um, so try to explain these symptoms to my doctor. You know, they're like, okay, well, you got, you know, digestive issues. We'll refer you to the gastroenterologist. You got skin issues in your hands. We'll refer you to the dermatologist. Um, you get like it's something overall must be wrong. So we're going to refer you to an endocrinologist who's going to like look at your blood work. And um, each one of these guys is like doing their own set of tests on me. Um, 
you know, given me their own take on what's going on, sometimes prescribing their own drugs. Sometimes, you know, the endocrinologist does blood work on me and it comes back and he says, oh, you know, good news. Um, your thyroid's normal. Like your blood labs look normal. Like everything's good. You're, you're good. And um, that's not what you want to hear when you're sick. You want to hear that, oh, I feel sick. I know I have things going wrong. But the piece of paper that came out of your fancy machine says I'm good. <laughs> like the things don't add up. So that, that, was, that was really where I started to get alienated. And I realized that, um, that uh, what they were doing wasn't working for me. And I had never been into anything um, alternative. I came from a background, a lot of medical doctors in my family. I just sort of was operating in the assumptions that medical doctors were like the end all be all and knew everything. And there was never a time where they couldn't figure something out. Like maybe that happened on a TV show once in a while, but that, why would that happen to me? But I got disillusioned because no one really acted like they really cared a whole lot. Like no one sat me down and was like, okay, Ben, well, we don't know what's wrong, but, um, we're going to get to the bottom of this. Like, I'm going to figure this out for you or I'm going to find somebody. No, it was just pass me off the next guy. Refer, 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 refer. And, you know, luckily I had insurance. Uh, this would have cost me a lot of money, but you know, basically I wasted a lot of time being with, with no answers. Um, so then started researching on my own. I was like, okay, I'm going to figure this out. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I, there's got to be something else to do. And so I was like, I'm open to, to whatever. Start like trying different supplements and um, trying different things like light therapy and, and um, it, weird stuff. None of it works. But as I'm reading, I'm like, okay, reading about how, you know, um, change your diet can help, eating more fruits and vegetables, eating more plant-based, not eating processed foods, um, things like that. And I sort of initially, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's nice, but I, I'm not doing any of that, you know? That's a little um, right? <laughs> yeah, that's just like, I can't be bothered. Like I was living off a diet of like, you know, microwave dinners and like Chipotle burritos and, and um, you know, just like Subway sandwiches and whatever. Um, like I was not cooking on my own and I had this mentality of like, I don't like to cook, so I'm never gonna, you're not getting me that. Um, but just kept kind of ramming my head up against the same wall to where I was like, okay, well maybe I'll try something different. And I thought, okay, you know, fruits and vegetables are healthy, but I'm lazy. So what I'm going to do, well, I can use a blender and make smoothies mm -hmm. because, um, it's like a, basically a blender is like the equivalent of the microwave that I was already using. Like you open it up, you throw the food in, you close it, you push a button a minute later, bam, you got your food. Lazy man approach. Okay. Um, so I, I was just so convinced that, that, um, that like I was not going to learn to cook and I was not going to be one of those annoying, healthy people. <laughs> um, but you know, after <laughs> doing that, uh, it just sort of, it, it became something that's like, okay, wow, I don't feel like, um, you know, just absolutely awful when I eat this stuff. Like I actually feel better. And then when I go and I have like processed food or junk food or whatever, like I, I feel my body immediately reacts. Um, so it was just sort of like, okay, well, I guess my body's like dragging me along here. Um, and so I, I had no intention of ever like becoming a vegan. I always thought they were like pretentious and obnoxious. Um, <laughs> But, you know, the more I got into it and the more I learned about it and I learned about animal agriculture and I learned about the effect on the environment and the ethics, it was just sort of like, wow, I'm glad I'm not contributing to that anymore. Yeah. Um, and uh, I remember, um, but I would still eat animal products from time to time if I was like, you know, if I was um, at a, an event or, or something, or it came up, or I just, I, I didn't want to be militant, but I remember, uh, I ran this race called the tough mutter. Have you oh, ever yeah. heard of it? I've, I've done a few of them myself. Okay. So I ran one and, um, and at the end, and I had trained for it, like all plant-based high raw, super healthy. Like I was just like, cause when I, when I felt better, like I, it wasn't just like I got well, it was like, I felt better than I'd ever felt in my life. Yeah. Like I, I sort of had lost sense of how good you could feel. I was just used to just feeling blah and I was kind of blah. And then I went to super blah. And then when I changed my diet, I went to like, it just went off the charts. And so I was like, let's see what the body can do. Like I'm going to run a tough mutter. I'm, I'm invincible. I can do anything. And I run the tough mutter at the very end. They're like, Oh, 
Like, um, here's, um, here's meal tickets. You get a beer and a turkey leg mm -hmm. and, um, and it was like a honey milk or something like all this stuff that I was like, Oh my God, I don't want to put any of that in my body. Like what, <laughs> like, this is how y'all celebrate. <laughs> um, I was always so, laughing at that too, not to cut you off, but the last Tough Mudder I did too. They're like, yeah, one free beer ticket. They didn't give us food at the last one, but I'm like beer, like, sure. I, I drink, you know, I'm not like completely yeah. sober, but like, we just ran this like 5k or 10k with obstacles and you're going to give me a beer. <laughs> Apparently people like it, but I just sort of like that moment clicked. I was like, man, I just, I worked so hard to be able to like complete this race. And I, you know, I, I, I so much discipline to stay healthy and, and to put in the work and I, like, it just made no sense to me to be like, okay, well now all it's done. So I'm going to just give, give my body a bunch of garbage. Right. Like it, it was really like an eye opening moment where I was like, like, screw this. Like, I think I'm just going to be vegan. Mm hmm. And it was just, it was in that moment that I made the choice. So how long ago so, was that? That was um, February 1st, 2011. Okay. So almost 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah. Now, obviously, a lot of us know that there are different types of vegans, right? And you kind of already touched on this a little bit. More whole food, plant-based, raw. You know, you can be a junk food, vegan, whatever. But because of your health conditions, I'm assuming you probably were more on the whole food, plant-based, raw yeah. And, and I really hate to like break it like in this tribalism of like, okay, right. we're already vegans. We're kind of outcasts. I mean, more less so than we were years ago, but it sounds like, Oh, what kind of vegan are you? Are you, you know, like, are you a stoner vegan or are you <laughs> like a, you know, it's, um, but yeah, I mean, like a vegan is essentially an ethical decision that you make. Right. Um, and, uh, and so plant-based is a health decision. So I just say that I'm both. Yeah. Some people are only one or the other. Um, I really wish everybody who was one of the two would be both, but it's their decision. Okay. So the reason I'm asking is just because I'm curious that, um, what, what started happening with your health and did you ever get like a proper diagnosis or was this still just like tests thrown up in the air? No, it was a lot of, a lot of hands in the air. Um, so within three to four months of me changing my diet, um, it took that time to kind of tweak it and figure out what really worked. Like I was still like, there was times when I was just like eating bags of broccoli for a meal. Cause then I was just like, Oh, raw food. You know, it's like vegetables, you know, that ended up not being a good choice. <laughs> um, but I, I found Doug Graham stuff and I really started incorporating that. And within, within like a month of doing that, it was like, okay, I'm like 95% symptom free. Okay. And then was like the continuation of the, like, wait, there's more, you know, like I'm not done yet. Feeling better. Feel every day. Like, wow. Okay. What's, um, so that happened. So I would say, you know, um, within, uh, it, it was right around that time, um, I would say like I had been incorporating plant-based foods. I went vegan after that Tough Mudder. And then two to three months after that was when I really like fully reversed my health condition. Wow. Um, yeah, but never got a formal diagnosis. Funny enough, I've been teaching the autoimmune stuff um, for, for you know several years now. And one day I got an email um, from somebody who was like, okay, well, you know, I see you help these people with like lupus and rheumatoid arthritis and MS. And, but, but what about me? I have a rare disease. It's called chronic myalgic encephalopathy. Can you help with that? And I was like, mm, let's see, never heard of this one. Going to go on WebMD. Um, cause, cause believe it or not, they don't really teach this stuff in school. Right. Um, they, like they teach some of it, but like, there's a lot of just rare diseases you don't learn about every single one. And I look it up and I look up the symptoms on WebMD. I'm like, that's exactly what I had. And uh, so I was like, oh yeah, actually, you know what? I can't help you because I think this is what I had too. So let's have a conversation. So that was kind of how I basically diagnosed myself. But I, I really think to a large degree, diagnoses are, are somewhat arbitrary. And um, working in the healthcare field now, I get a lot of people who show up in my office or, 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 or I meet who want help from me who say, oh, I've been diagnosed with, you know, X, Y, Z, A, B, C. And they go over what they have or they show me like their blood work or their x-rays or whatever. And I go, oh, no, I don't know who dropped the ball on this, but you totally got misdiagnosed. Like, this is not what's going on. Yeah. Um, so...
I yeah, can that's, totally that's, relate to that. I totally, I've yeah. been through some stuff myself and it was exactly how you described it. it was test after test and also had insurance, but then some of the tests were still a hundred dollar copay for this and $50 for this and the time, like the effort and the frustration. Yeah. And for me, it was years of, of all the, all of this. And then you know, reaching out to plant-based doctors on Instagram that I know I can trust and telling them things. And they're telling me which tests to get ordered. And I'm just like, oh my God, like this is crazy, you know? And so if anybody is listening that's gone through this, they can obviously relate to the insanity that can go along with trying to figure out what's going on. Um, And I think it's amazing that now you're on the other side and you're helping other people. So let's talk about your profession for a little bit. You uh, work in Phoenix, Arizona. You're a chiropractor out there. So before we get into what you do specifically, just in general, what does a chiropractor focus on? Um, well, traditionally, there's sort of two um, competing camps of chiropractors. They're the ones who are very mechanistic and they're just like, I just work on back pain. That's what I do. Neck pain, maybe headaches. Um, and then they're the ones who are more vitalistic, who have this approach of like, okay, my job is to give the body what it needs to heal itself and remove any interference to healing. And that's what that, um, the idea, that's the idea behind the chiropractic adjustment, remove the interference to healing, remove the interference to the nervous system. When the spine's all twisted up, the nerves and the spinal cord can't communicate, right? We remove that interference, body can heal a lot of things and not just, um, you know, musculoskeletal pain. And so that was the philosophy that most aligned with me when I was going through my health crisis and I hit age 30 and I was like, okay, I'm going to do something different because I worked as basically an engineer for like nine, 10 years before Mm. that. And I was like, okay, this philosophy of like the body heals itself uh, that chiropractic has, like the body heals itself under the right conditions. You provide it the right conditions, you remove the interference, the body does the work. No person heals anybody, you just heal yourself. Um, I had experienced that firsthand with my own health. Yeah. I had, you know, gone from this very like, you know, strong medical model of like, you know, the drugs cure the disease to, okay, I didn't do any drugs. I just changed what I ate. And I literally watched my body like completely transform before my eyes and like diseases and health conditions I had just literally just wiped away. And it was all me. It was me and mangoes, you know? And, um, and so like you can teach people that all day. You can tell them, Oh, the body heals itself. But until they experience it firsthand, it's, it's, it's a total paradigm shift. So when I was like looking at like, okay, do I want to be a medical doctor? Do I want to be a naturopathic doctor? Do I, what do I want to do? And, um, and I kind of knew that I didn't want to do medicine because I was going to have to spend all this time learning drugs and surgery that I didn't even want to do. Right, right. So again, it comes down to the time, right? Like I'm going to spend two, three years of my life learning things that I'm going to go, oh, well, I learned that, but pff, I don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> like who wants, you know, who wants drugs? Um, it just didn't seem like a useful, you know, a u- good use of my time. So I figured, okay, chiropractic school, I'm going to be helping people with diet and lifestyle, which, you know, they teach nutrition in chiropractic school. They don't teach it in um, right. medical school. And I'm going to have this other skill set um, that I can help people with, um, you know, the chronic pain conditions and other things like that, which if you're a medical doctor, you know, people have pain, what you do, you put them on pain medication. We all know things like opioids, benzos. I mean, they're bad news, yeah. right? They're causing this whole opioid epidemic. I don't want to be part of that. Right. Um, so I just felt it was the most congruent with me. It was something that I could practice and not be like, Oh, I really don't want to be doing this. <laughs> um, but if I had, you know, chosen, you know, done medicine or chosen medical specialty, I would have been doing a lot of work that I didn't like. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's, that's kind of the thought process well, there. And a lot of the plant-based doctors that I know now, uh, when I've heard their personal stories, most of them did not go vegan before med school. They went after, after they started yeah. realizing everything. And I think if a lot of them were to do it all over again and they went vegan way younger than that, I don't know if they would have picked the same profession. So I completely understand. Probably not. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So what are some of the more common ailments or issues that you see in your patients? Um, I would say Hashimoto's disease is probably the most common. That's the autoimmune of the thyroid. The immune system attacks the thyroid. And, and um, you know, really now most thyroid conditions are um, autoimmune in nature. 
Um, so the, like when people are having thyroid conditions, it's almost always autoimmune. The medical approach is just put them on synthetic thyroid hormones yeah. and do the thing where it's like, okay, we made your labs look good. Like your TSH and your T3, all it's all normal. And they're like, but I'm still having symptoms. Oh, but your paper looks good. I went through um, the same thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 So you've mentioned the word autoimmune several times. What exactly does that mean? Sure. Well, we should have addressed that. I'm yeah, glad you asked. It's all right. I figured now was a good time. <laughs> and sometimes I forget, you know, I, I do this, you know, full time. So it's like, oh, I'll just assume people find me and they know what that is. But auto meaning self immune being the system that exists in your body to protect you from pathogens, bacteria, viruses, fungi, invaders, um, things that cause infectious disease. And so, um, Something goes wrong, something goes haywire, and that system that's supposed to be protecting you actually ends up attacking you. And so um, what's, what's interesting is that there's all these different autoimmune diseases. So there's Hashimoto's, mm -hmm. there's um, multiple sclerosis, there's Crohn's disease. It's all the same phenomenon, but the immune system is attacking a different part of the body. So you have ulcerative colitis, the immune system's attacking the colon. Mm -hmm. Well, you know... Two inches away from the colon is the uterus that's attacking that. You got endometriosis, completely different presentation of the disease, but same phenomenon hacking, happening. Um, and so the good news is that the approach to healing them is, is pretty much universal um, when it comes to, uh, you know, using diet and lifestyle. That, uh, that the diet and lifestyle that reverses Crohn's is the same diet and lifestyle that reverses um, Hashimoto's, rheumatoid arthritis, or any of that stuff. Okay. So let's get into that then. Um, before we talk about how a whole food plant-based diet can help with these kind of things, how do or do meat and dairy play a role in um, fueling these issues or symptoms? Sure. So um, meat and dairy are, are pro-inflammatory. Um, things like TMAO, omega-6 fatty acids, um, just a lot of heme iron, all these things are um, very toxic. And the body actually am, am, mounts an immune response to try to fight some of this stuff. Like if you check like the white blood cell levels of a meat eater versus a, a vegan, the, the vegans are going to be lower white blood cells because their immune system is constantly trying to attack all this crap that's being thrown at it. Um, so when the body's in defense like that, of just trying to fight off all this toxicity that's being thrown at it day after day, I mean, it can mount a defense and, you know, like not die after 50, 60 years, but eventually it's just like, well, give up heart attack, whatever. Yeah. Um, but you remove that stuff, you remove, you know, the, the interference, which is the food. And all of a sudden the body can go, okay, glad I, I was sick of fighting that stuff off. Now let me clean house and, and, um, and get that done. And, uh, you know, as long as you keep feeding me the good stuff, I'll be able to focus my energy on healing instead of defending. Yeah. Okay. That completely makes sense. You think there's probably, especially here in America, a lot of people that are dealing with this that don't even realize it because it's something they've dealt with their whole lives. Right. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, um, you know, in 1980, like the autoimmune was like one in 10,000 people. Nobody had ever heard of it. I mean, I never heard of it in 2010. And now it's like crazy common where it's like one in seven people, I think is the number. Like one in 14 have it and are diagnosed. And then another one in 14 are walking around undiagnosed. Wow. But um, chronic disease has become such a problem such a big problem. It's like, we kind of just take it for granted that people are sick. Yeah. We start calling it, Oh, you have a pre-existing condition. You know, it's like you're chronically ill. <laughs> um, so, and, and nothing, no, no shame on those people, but it's just, it's so commonplace that everybody's on drugs and everybody's obese and everybody is like dealing with these things that they just think it's a normal part of being human. Yeah. And so when you try to tell them like, Hey, look, look, if you just ate healthier, you wouldn't have to deal with any of that stuff. Like, well, oh, I don't, you know, it's, it's, that's, that's really difficult to get through to people until they experience it themselves. Yeah, absolutely. I know. I'm sure you've seen those memes floating around, but I remember seeing that one where it's this like morbidly obese man that's on, you know, in a hospital bed and, and, uh, you know, the, he's got like, he's ready for this triple bypass for the third time or whatever's going on. And the, the doctor comes up, he said, well, we have, you know, two choices here. We can either give you another bypass and you may not survive, or we can switch you to a plant-based diet. And the guy's like, yeah. And he picks the surgery. You're just like, Oh my the God. Diet, that sounds so extreme. Right. Right. I think that was his response. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. Man, we need to start changing these perspectives of this. <laughs> well, I mean, I think the good news is that we are, right? Yeah, I think so too. Like, um, you know, more and more of these documentaries are coming out, more and more people are going vegan, you know, and paradoxically at the same time, like the vegan junk food has like leveled up big time, I know. you know, um, but you know, like at least it's better for the planet, but I think overall there, there's, a, there's a health consciousness growing, especially in 2020 where people are like, wow, okay. Like um, I, I, I don't know about this COVID thing, but I, I better take care of me, better get like my house in order so that I don't get it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, we, and we can talk about that subject if you want or, or bypass it, but I think that has raised people's conscious awareness of their own health and that, that they need to take an active role in it. Yeah, actually, let's talk about it because, I mean, this is something, obviously, it's no secret. We've been dealing this for this almost a year here in America. So uh, since this has happened, I'm sure it's probably changed the amount of office visits you can have. But, but let's say, you know, if there weren't any restrictions, do you think people are becoming more conscious? You kind of said that you thought that way anyway, but do you feel that there's more patients coming in because they're more paranoid or maybe because they're trying to be more conscious of their health so they don't get sick and have a, a worse condition? Um, well, I think here's the thing. This is a great question. With autoimmunity, one of the main drug strategies is they go, okay, well, we know your immune system is attacking your colon or your joints or whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to suppress your immune system. We're going to give you a drug like Humira or Remicade to, to suppress it because it's attacking you and we don't want your immune, bad immune system. Like, you know, like a, like a, a disobedient child, we're going to just like, you know, we're going to stuff you in a corner and shut up. One problem, <laughs> kind of need your immune system, right? Uh, I mean, some of these drugs have side effects like they cause all these skin infections. Some of them cause cancer if you take them long enough. But overall, you're suppressing your immune system. Now we're in the middle of a, a pandemic or an alleged pandemic, depending on how you want to look at it. But there's a, a contagious virus going around and you kind of need your immune system to fight it. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, in the autoimmune space, a lot of people have woken up and gone, whoa, like, I, I don't want to be on immune suppressants. If there's this COVID thing going around, like, what do I got to do? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, and, and I think a lot of times it, it is that that shocking event. Like I have people who, you know, has ulcerative colitis and they, they, you know, they go on drugs for years and years and years and they get their colon scoped every year. And then one year the doctor goes, whoa, it's just getting too bad. It's getting too bad. And we, we got to cut this thing out. And you're going to be, you're never going to have a normal bowel movement again. Sorry, you're going to carry on a plastic bag on your side. And it's just kind of going to go in there and you got to throw that away however often. And, and that's like record scratch for people. Like, again, they go, whoa, 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 you know, hold the phone. I, I, I'm, I'm compliant up to a point, but I'm going to keep my colon. Like, right. I, I, you know, um, so it's these, these sort of shocking events that um, wake people up to some degree. Yeah. And I think um, with COVID, with what's going on, people are, you know, they're getting suspicious. They're like, okay, well, I have to wear the mask in the restaurant when I'm waiting. But then when I go and I sit down and eat, then I can take it off and that's okay. And like, there's just all these arbitrary rules around it where people are going, this just doesn't add up. I think like, I, <laughs> this is getting silly. Like I, I need, it's time to rethink things. Yeah, um, well, I'm, I'm curious, like the difference between California and Arizona, because I did travel to Arizona during COVID times and I was actually a little bit shocked. I thought that you guys were going to be like, no mask, no nothing, like pro Second Amendment, pro freedom. And uh, the pro freedom and Second Amendment were there. But like the, the, I was actually shocked at how many masks, I mask up Arizona all over the freeways. I'm like, what? Yeah, I mean, I, but you were in Flagstaff, right? Yeah, I did. Uh, I drove through Phoenix on the way home because I blew okay. out a tire. But yeah. <laughs> so Flagstaff is is definitely like the, the more liberal blue kind of yeah. college town. Um, Phoenix is it's it's a very like purple like <laughs> like 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 hardcore blue, hardcore red, okay. right next to each other, like battling it out. Okay. Um, so it's it's a real hodgepodge, like. Some places are like, you know, you don't have to wear one, don't wear one. So I'm like, you're not even allowed in with one. Yeah. And other places are like, you know, crazy. Like I have a friend who has a, owns a vegan, um, like little boutique where he just is a couple and they sell, um, like vegan t-shirts and uh -huh. knickknacks and snacks and whatever. And right next to them next door is an antique shop. 
and they have a sign up that's like, your mask must cover your nose and your mouth. And, um, you know, it's like all, all these rules. And then my, my buddy, he has a, he has a pretty bad uh, medical condition where he literally can't wear one. And this lady yells at him when he walks by the front of their store on the outside, like, you're not wearing your mask. I can't wear one. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, we don't have to go into the whole mask issue, but, um, I think just the fact that there's a lot of inconsistencies in, yeah. in, um, the, the rhetoric around like, what's the healthy thing to do. And then of course, no, like there's no talk about like, Oh, you could eat healthier and you could exercise and you could like that, that helps immunity. It's like, they don't want to talk about it. It's like, oh yeah, we're closing gyms because it's yeah. what's best for everybody. Yeah. No, um, and a I, lot of people just, okay, I'm going to be compliant and I'm going to go along and I'm not going to make noise. And then some people are like, you know, heck with this, I'm fighting it, whatever. But there's a lot of people who just kind of hang out in the middle, right? They just hang on the fence. Yeah. They don't want to say anything. They don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to lose friends, but they're watching what everybody's doing. And they're watching the people that are playing along and they're watching the people that are, that are, that are um, standing out. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so, um, I think it's important to, you know, stand for what you believe is right, you know, wh- whatever it is and let people make their own decision. Absolutely. Um, but I think overall people are going, things aren't adding up and I- I'm going to look into this, you know, eating healthier exercising thing because yeah. that, that I might need to do that. I've seen a little bit of that. And unfortunately I've seen the irony on the other side where I'm sure you've experienced this yourself where you go to a grocery store and you know, you see, I don't mean this in any sort of derogatory way, but obviously a reflection of somebody's lifestyle is usually in their physical appearance, right? And I, I see this woman mm-hmm. going up to the, the you know, register to go pay and, and she's severely obese and she's got two masks on and a shield and like fully clothed. And I mean, this was when it was still warmer outside too. And in her cart have, you know, it's tons of processed meat and dairy. And she's this, you better stay six feet away from me because I don't want to get sick. And I'm just like, I want to take a picture of this woman and make her into a meme and like not to make fun of her, but just to show like the disconnect that's going on with people that you are putting poison into your body, but you're afraid of getting sick. So if you are at this higher risk range, why don't you get yourself out of that range? Yeah. Um, And if we're going to, you know, invest so much time, money and energy and just, you know, shutting all these things down. Like, I mean, I haven't done the math, but I feel like we could fit everybody in America a heck of a lot healthier for this year, you know, with right. the money that we had um, spent. Um, but that, that's capitalism to some degree. It's like, you know, big alcohol, big meat, big dairy, big junk food, all got to make their green. Absolutely. Um, so, so it, it's not something that... W- I think it would be ludicrous to expect the government to tell people to eat healthier. I think that's something they got to figure out on their own. Yeah. And I think that's happening. I think it's, it's going to be a bottom up. If the government started uh, telling people to eat healthier, I would start questioning where their funding was coming from. <laughs> <laughs> true. Very true. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, I don't want to dive too deep into quote unquote conspiracy theories or anything, but um, <laughs> let's get back to your office. So, what type of person would you expect to show up at your office or would you recommend to come in? Um, like what would they be experiencing before they came to you? Um, I mean, I guess if it was, if it was autoimmune, there's usually five main symptoms. Like there's some kind of chronic pain component. There's usually some kind of digestive component. There's, um, a, a fatigue component, a brain fog component, and usually some sort of sensitivity. Where whether that's like um, you know sensitive to hot weather, sensitive to cold weather, sensitive to chemicals or smells, um, I, I've also found, and I don't really have evidence other than empirical evidence to back this up, but a lot of a lot of empaths, a lot of people who are very emotionally sensitive, end up being the ones who get the who get autoimmune disease, or the autoimmune disease brings along the sensitivity. Because I feel like I was someone who was very emotionally insensitive sensitive for a long, greater period of my life. And then when this all happened to me with my health, it was like, I, especially when I changed my diet, like my sensitivity and my emotional sensitivity, um, and my sensitivity to things just like, like subtle energy became very heightened. Yeah. And it was very strange, you know, as an engineer, it was like, okay, all of a sudden I'm like picking up vibes, <laughs> like, like really experiencing that. I'd be like, well, I don't know what that was, but that I definitely felt that. Yeah. Um, so that, yeah, those are the those are the main symptoms. Um, but you know, usually people who come to see me have had an autoimmune disease for a while. They've kind of been down the road of the medical system. They've done what their doctor said. They realize they're not getting any better. They start to get frustrated, and they're looking at other options. Most people, I'm not the first person they turn to. Right, right. 
Um, they're usually just not in the know enough about this kind of thing. And if they were, they probably aren't getting the disease because they're probably taking pretty good care of themselves. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, we've talked a lot about like personal care and, and people's lifestyle habits leading to sort of diseases, but can autoimmune diseases come from genetics as well? Um, well, I don't, I don't think so. I think, I think, um, you know, what, um, some of like in what the health they said that like you know genetics load the gun but lifestyle pulls the trigger mm -hmm. uh, because if this disease was one in ten thousand in the 1980s and it's one in seven now um it can't be like that just makes no sense like right. how did the gene pool change in 40 years and, right uh, yeah okay. but people still throw that out with all these you know chronic diseases that are on the rise like autism you know same thing it's like well it's genetic well <laughs> Everything's you know, genetic these days. Yeah. It's what's so like it's like, you know, if I work out really hard and I, you know, do whatever, automatically people are just like, man, it's your genetics. And I'm like, okay, yes, I definitely can build muscle easier than a lot of females. I that is probably a genetic thing. But I put in the work. <laughs> I go yeah. to the gym and I eat right. And don't just tell me it's my genetics, because also in my genetics is a ton of obesity. So <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I think there's a tendency to just abdicate responsibility. Yeah. So we say genetics and then it's like, oh, well, it's coming out more. Oh, well, we're just diagnosing it better. Right. So it's like, um, but then when it goes down, like flu cases, oh, we're just doing a better job taking care of it. Somehow medicine always finds a way to be able to take credit, it's, which is, it's is, so is smart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a little strange how that works. I was going to make a comment. I'm not going to. I, <laughs> I'll tell you after the podcast. So um, if, if somebody's coming to you for help and say that they're not already on a plant, whole food plant-based diet, is that something that you like to recommend to your patients? Yeah. I mean, if they want to work with me, like that's, they got to do it. I, and I really like when it comes to the autoimmune stuff, I'm not really like a, um, like I'll kind of outline what my program entails. Yeah. It's like, okay, if you want to do it, here's what you got to do. Um, and I have a coaching program with people where it's like immersion all in, do it all or nothing. Like if you want to dip your toes in the water on your own and kind of figure out and like hope things get better and hope you change your habits. Good luck to you. Yeah. Um, but I, I work with people who are like super motivated to go hundred percent get well because anywhere in between the spectrum, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Like it, it just doesn't, I wish it did, but, um, I, I, you gotta be, people gotta be at that point where they're willing to do anything. Well, unfortunately. I, I mean, I love relating just cause it's easy for my brain to figure out like relating bad food habits to illegal substances. Like I have this cocaine habit, right? Like you, we can't just cut down. Like there's no little bit of cocaine, like yeah. just, you know, just on Thursday at 4 PM. No, like if you want to get sober, you better cut this out completely. Yeah. And what's great is that, um, you know, people have this idea that like, oh, I'm going to miss it and I'm going to crave it and it's going to be so bad. And it's like, you know, you'll go through a withdrawal period, but eventually you'll be eating healthy and you'll actually love it. You'll crave the foods you're already eating. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, I want to make a salad. I want to make a smoothie. Like, oh, mangoes are in season now. Oh my God. I just, you know, load them all in, my tr in, in the trunk of my car. Um, like you, your habits will change. You'll enjoy doing it. You won't miss the old stuff. Um, but if you kind of tiptoe in, that'll never like maybe there are people who do that approach and they, they, but I think most people need to kind of just be thrown in the deep end of the pool. Honestly, I agree, I agree. from my personal experience. <laughs> I can say that for sure. Okay. Well, if people want to learn more about your services or uh, get in contact with you, Oh, are you also doing a uh, video chats these days for people that don't live near you? <laughs> Yeah. In fact, most of the stuff I do with autoimmune people is, um, on zoom. Um, so, um, yeah, but yeah, if people want to learn more. So, uh, I'm on all the social networks as my name. We'll see how long that lasts. I feel like I get censored a lot. Um, but Dr. Benjamin Benulis on Instagram, probably the one I'm most active on. Yeah. Um, and then I wrote a free 12 page ebook. It's called the autoimmune recovery blueprint. It's the fundamentals it's kind of like if I had to go back in time to 10 years ago to myself and was like, here, just do this and like give them. And it's like, okay, got to go back to 2020 <laughs> and like, just give them that, that PDF. That's what that book would be. So okay. autoimmune recovery blueprint.com is a free ebook. People can download. Okay. Awesome. So we'll list those links here in the description of the podcast for everybody to check out. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to mention before we wrap it up today? Um, no, I think that's about it. Had a lot of fun doing this podcast and I'm glad you're doing them again. 
I yeah, really enjoy it. So, thank yeah. you. Thanks for being a part of it. I, I was like so frustrated at one point that I'm like, man, I'm just going to not do this. And then I started having so many people reach out like, wait, you haven't released anything in a while. I want to be a guest or I want to hear another one. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I'm actually really grateful for everyone that's listening right now who's stuck around or come back or whatever. And I'm obviously so grateful for my guests because without you guys, I would have nothing. So um, thank you for your time today. And it was great hearing from you. I can't wait to see what you got coming. All right. Thank you, Danielle. You are welcome. And thank you, everyone who's listening. And we will catch you next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. For more things Vegan Danielle, visit me on Instagram at vegan underscore Danielle or on my website at www.vegandanielle.com.